TV. This is episode number 21. As usual, I'm your geek girl host, Eve Park, the girl who plays with Legos. This week, once again, we're listening to Talk Nerdy to Me by Possible Oscar, and once again, we also have another Majesticon interview, this week with Lego lady, Christine. Last Christmas was the first Christmas that I had a full-size Christmas tree of my own and my cat thought it was just for her. Anyway, I took my Lego train from when I was a kid and made it circle around the base of the tree, like toy trains do. But I just found out that they actually do make a Christmas-themed Lego train. So I bought it. Check it out. I was planning to customize my Lego train anyway and make it a little bit more Christmassier, but the Lego holiday train set is a much better starting place. So now I can take the two train sets and make like the ultimate Christmas Lego train. So I know it's the wrong season to be talking about Christmas, but it's never the wrong season to play with toys. And I haven't gotten my train yet, but I'm so excited. So I had to tell you about it right away. So I was wondering if any of you still play with Legos. And if you do, maybe you could send me a picture of the latest thing you built or the coolest thing you ever built. Or maybe if you've ever gone to one of those Legolands. I've never been but I really wish I could. And send those pictures to geekgirl at clevermedia.com. You know, I always dreamed of building like furniture out of Legos, and I finally priced what it would cost to build my coffee table out of bulk black Legos. And it would cost about $6,000. I don't know about you, but my coffee table cost me a lot less than that, so I think I'll be sticking with the wood one. So now I bring you my interview with Geek Girl Lego Builder, Christine Corey Fuchs. My name's Christina Corey Fuchs, and I play with Legos. I buy Legos. I sell Legos. So I've come here to sell some of my wares. Before I went back to college, I was uh, selling them over the internet uh, mm -hmm. via bricklink.com. And that's where you can buy and sell and meet other people that uh, play with Legos, adults and children alike. <laughs> um, a lot of the things that I have to sell today are basic, you know, basic bricks, which are good for kids, the young kids like, you know, and anything I can do to get the little kids interested in. I mean, if a little kid comes up to me and like, how much is that one? They get it for two dollars because I don't have the heart to charge them anymore for it. Because if anything, I want other kids to be interested in it. Spread the love of Legos. Exactly. That would be my goal of anything. How'd you do at the show today? Were there many Lego buyers? or? There were some. We had a lot of people come up, adults especially, realizing like, oh, Lego is still popular. And then I had a lot of little kids and that was my goal. I had one parent actually buy for his son in college a lot of the bulk bricks because his son still enjoys it. So that was my big sale of the day. Oh. I made my table feedback and that's all I ask. What do you do with Legos? Do you have any projects you'd like to I do things like of? Bob here. This is my secretary. He normally sits at my desk at work. Um, he's based off a kit that they made in 2000, which is a sculpture kit. And then I've acquired the pieces separately through Bricklink to change his color out a little bit to personalize it. I've also done mosaics. In fact, just within the last, what was it, month ago? A month ago, we went to Nandesicon, which is the anime convention that happens in the metro area. I did a 30 inch by 30 inch mosaic of Faye Valentine, third place in the mixed media art competition. We had it on an easel so we could stand up thousands of individual little bricks. So is that like on its side? So I, you see the smooth side or the, the Lego we side up? You see the Lego side up, so you okay. see all the individual studs. Do they have like big canvas size ones for you to build your they, mosaic on? They have larger ones, they're gray plates uh -huh. usually, so I think they're about 15 inches by 15 inches, so I ended mm -hmm. up using four of those plates okay. to map out the design. And it's like a really big cross stitch project. Yeah. What sort of games or geeky things do you like besides Legos? I read a lot, 
watch a lot of anime, World of Warcraft, and it's the obsession at work. It's uh -huh. really bad. You work for eight, ten hours, same people. You go back online and play World of Warcraft for three or four hours each night, same people you work with. Wow, what a great transition to World of Warcraft. I don't even need to do some artsy fartsy black and white video clip with melodic audio filters. Our wow tip from this week comes from David. David writes, as a WOW newbie, my tip would be when you are in a group, please don't say, I have a plan, and charge the enemy without further details. The other people, like me, will just stand there puzzled for a moment while you get yourself beat on. Really? Well, this sounds like something very specific that must have happened to David one of the first times that he grouped with people. It's called Leroy Jenkins, or pulling a Leroy, and sort of glorified in WoW culture. And while it might be funny to occasionally rush the enemy screaming Leroy Jenkins while you're partying with your intimate friends or pals for life, you can't really get away with it with strangers or newbies. As geeks and gamers, we usually use the term newbie or noob as derogatory. But seriously, people, the game has only been around for like two years. We were all noobs once. Sure, noobs gum up the works every once in a while, but really, we should be inviting more people to play with us. The more gamers there are, the more voters we have when gaming censorship legislation comes down the pipe. And the bigger the target audience that gaming companies have, the bigger and better games they can afford to make for us. So in conclusion, my wow tip for this week is that as gamers, we really don't need to make gaming any more inaccessible to new gamers than it already is. Just because somebody doesn't know as much about the game as you, doesn't mean that they're a complete moron. So it really helps the community at large if you take the time to explain some things to newer players, especially if they're on your side, and certainly if they're in your party. Of course, if they're the enemy, eh, go ahead, own them till they cry. Artsy fartsy transition back to Legos. You know I had to hook you up with one of those. Anyway, I wanted to talk about Bricklink.com that Christine mentioned. Bricklink.com is a pretty cool Lego fan site. You can find a lot of inventory there. eBay is pretty good too, but Bricklink is better. I'm definitely going to go to Bricklink to buy the extra little pieces I need to customize my Lego train. And the number one piece that I need is elf minifigs. The train comes with normal engineers and workers, which everybody knows Christmas trains need to be run by elves. As far as I know, Lego has never made an elf minifigure, so I'm gonna have to build my own. So if there's any Lego maniacs out there, maybe you can give me some advice. But I'm thinking that these Lego forest men of the castle set are probably a pretty good start to build my elves. They've got funny little hats and are mostly green. So I'm wrapping it up. But remember, send me your Lego project or vacation pictures or stories. And as always, send me your questions, your comments, and your wow tips to geekgirl at clevermedia.com. And if you didn't last week, I highly recommend that you check out possibleoscar.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. And if I could figure out the cosine of your heart, that'd be a good start. By the way, if you were a superhero, what would your name and superpower be? If I were a superhero, what would my name and superpower be? Well, I already am. I'm Trivia Girl. I know all trivia. Whenever we have game night, I usually do pretty well. So I see.